news and good news. <laughs> the bad news is the Fed is not going to be ended by Congress taking a vote next week, next month, or next year, and maybe never. But I'll tell you what, the Fed's days are numbered because they will be like they will be like the Soviet system. They will collapse because it's an unworkable system. You just can't keep taking reeling out paper. They don't even have to print the money anymore. All they do is click it in a computer and everybody grabs hold of it and they, they think it's wonderful. But uh, and, and that's why you still have people thinking, well, you know, we have to give everybody free education, free, free medical care. But they never ask the important thing. Well, where did they get this notion that people have a right to medical care? Well, oh, that is very inviting. I mean, you're compassionate, you care about it, and if we have everybody at least they have to have medical care. Well, they never ask the question, where does this right come from? Where is the, who, who pays for it? Without destroying the rights of somebody else. So it's a sacrifice. Of it. Now, is it, is it work where you could use force and they twist and on the definition of, uh, of a right and people had perfect medical care and uh, access to their own doctor and all this and it seemed to be working well, that'd be a different story. But it's a total disaster. You know, it, it, serves the, it serves the special interest. The monopolies get behind it. The drug companies are behind it. Yeah. The Obamacare, the drug companies were behind it, as, as well as the insurance companies, as well as the medical monopolies. What you need is competition. You need it in medicine just like anything else, and there's not much competition in medicine. There's, there's way, way too many prohibitions. If you want alternative health care or, or a far, far more natural uh, view of medicine, uh, you can get in a lot of trouble. You get closed down. If you're using nutritional products that are not approved by the FDA, you can get in trouble. It's all kinds of things like that. You need to legalize freedom, and it will solve so many of our problems. To this because there are there are bits and pieces of freedom even in the medical care and one is uh, you know if you want to go to a plastic surgeon or get your LASIK keep treatment sure it's all pay it never have but guess what's happened the prices go down sharply down and then you get good care the quality is always going up so it's uh, it, all, all we need is is this principle of liberty to be ingrained and this is the reason you know I come here I come here and I go different places and uh, I am pleased there were more than 10 of you here tonight. <laughs> so, uh, and that has to do with YAL, the fantastic job they do. Because it is in the future, like I said, it's not, the vote isn't going to happen next week or two, but the, the, the growth of the movement is way over what I ever expected. I believe that the best I could do is maybe get elected, maybe get reelected, maybe leave a record of way people should vote, and that would be it. But uh, I think there was groundwork done already by the many people who talked about liberty. So the ground was fertile. And uh, during the last couple of uh, you know, elections, people, people came together on this. And right now, the big question is, uh, you know, people, for this, uh, a superficial, especially in the media, they, they'll say the libertarian movement is dead, dead and gone. Trump destroyed. It's over and done with. I would say they're absolutely wrong. They don't even know about YAL, and when they hear about it, it'll be a change. And that's where the success is. The success is in the ideas. There's a lot of professors now, a lot of books, a lot of organizations. When I came across this whole message, Leonard Reed was promoting this in the 1950s, and, and uh, that was it. You had to write and maybe get a book in a month and, and sort of thing like that. Now, now you come across a book and you want to get a book, you know, 24 hours later, sometimes in your mailbox. There's no reason for not having the, the good book, but sort it out. Don't read the bad books. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of junk out there. But the message of liberty is alive and well. I'm very encouraged. 900 chapters around the, uh, to the country now. So if you're looking for hope, work with this organization, support it, and keep spreading the message 
because that's where the success is and a lot of people don't realize it but they don't have to you know it's not a majority vote now you don't have to wait I'm waiting for 51 percent then I'm gonna run for office no you need to be in leadership position that's why you will be in leadership positions because uh, you know most people are just followers they hear some oh that sounds good and they go along with it but understand the message it's a beautiful message it's a moral based on a moral principle it's based on our history it's based on our Constitution and it's not going backwards because we're going forward there's a better understanding of free market economics and monetary policy the principles of liberty more than anything else and I keep thinking historically you know the earth itself is four, uh, 4 4.5 billion years old and most of everything that exists that seems to have permanent modern uh, mo uh, modernity to it uh, it's 300 years so it's, it's so short. So if we just have this change in attitude that we reject the use of force in anything that we do on a personal level and hold the feet to the fire of anybody in Washington or anybody in government and take the authority away from government to use force against us, then I believe we would enter, enter into an age of peace and prosperity, which should be our goal. Thank you. everybody. Um, Dr. Paul has agreed to take some questions. Um, so we are going to be doing our typical, if you want to tweet at YA Liberty using the hashtag Make Liberty Win, we're going to take some questions. Uh, staff will be vetting those and getting those to me. Uh, but please, uh, we'll start with a question uh, that I put together. Just uh, if you had to give advice, Dr. Paul, to, uh, to the young folks in the room uh, about how to get involved or which ways to get involved. What would you tell them? Well, to me, the most important thing is to uh, understand the message. It, it, once you see it, it's like a light bulb and everything comes together. And a lot of people, young people, others who just can really say it's just like a light bulb and a switch turns on because it makes so much sense. It always pleases me when somebody comes up and says it's common sense. But you still have to study it, mainly so that you can answer the. Uh, uh, the bleeding hearts, the people that want to paint you in a corner. You're unpatriotic, you don't care about the troops, you don't care about poor people, you want people to die in the streets, all this stuff. You have to have arguments against that. So that is the responsibility on oneself uh, to become knowledgeable and know what the answers are and understand monetary policy. And then the next step is up to you. Uh, if you're really confused, you don't need to have exactly what to do, work with YAL and work diligently and recruit and support and financially and all these things. But there are so many, even that I met in the audience today, uh, people have had their own organization. They're in state legislatures. They're, they're doing things. And uh, sometimes when I'm asked that question, I'm a little bit flipping about it. They say, what should I do? What should I do? I agree with you. What should I do? I say, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> It's up to you, and there's a lot of jobs, but one thing, though, that I have advocated, and I believe, is that if the light bulb goes on and you understand this is true, this is true, liberty is an answer, it's based on non-aggression, and it will solve a lot, a lot of problems. If you come to that conclusion, you're in a very rare group of people, but once again, that shouldn't bother you too much, but you're in a rare group of people. But if you have that, if you have been enlightened with believing that liberty is better than authoritarianism, then you have an obligation. I believe, uh, to me, it's a personal obligation that you have uh, to spread that message to yourself, to your family, your friends, your neighbors, start an organization or whatever. But I think you have to be involved if you believe this message is worthwhile.